welcome to another lesson. Today we're going to cover the quotes and the utilities. Quotes is an important factor of your Autodesk setup because if you have quotes, means you will have opportunities, means you have deals in the pipeline. And of course, what we wanted to do is to win those, uh, those deals and ultimately turn those ones over into projects or tickets or billable items. In order to create a quote, you always have to create first an opportunity. That's basically your opportunity is kind of your bucket. It can have multiple quotes, can have multiple directions in, in what that opportunity goes. Uh, but before we can make a quote, you have to first create an opportunity. Let me show you how you can do that. On the main menu, there's always the plus sign and you have over here the option to go to an opportunity and you can click right away from there. There's multiple ways to also to get there. There's also if you're, for example, in the CRM module and you did a search for some opportunities, uh, you have maybe several opportunities that are listed here. There's always the button also there for a new. I also brought up when you're, for example, already in a company and you're working within that company, for example, you have them on the phone and you're kind of looking at some configuration items, then you can also choose to make already a quote right away from there, an opportunity. And you have either way the button here as new opportunity once you're on the opportunities already. And also there's on top always in that client also the new uh, button. And that's also where you have the opportunity. So multiple ways on how to get to an opportunity. I'm just going to go for this main screen and I say I'll create a new opportunity that will open up a new page and you have to put a couple of uh, items in there. That's what we did already with the opportunity categories in a different lesson. I'm going to choose the unknown company. I'm not going to choose a contact here. States, as you can see, that's a, that's a, a requirement. Uh, put it to qualification. That's usually the states where we put it in when uh, you're trying to make a quote and you're trying to qualify if it's indeed a, uh, a good qualification, if it's a quotable uh, opportunity. The item I will put it out a couple of weeks, but look here on the bottom, you also have some opportunities, uh, some, some uh, uh, closing dates that makes it easy for you. It's either way today, seven days from now, the 30 days or the 60 days. You can also choose, okay, I'm going to do always the end of the month. That's basically right away from the, from the calendar item you can visit. We can say, you know, it's going to be probably just 60 days out. Just click the button and it will automatically calculate the 60 days out from today's date. It's always very easy. The opportunity needs to have a name. Today I will call it a test quoting. You can do a description, testing. Let's see what else do we have to uh, fill in by obligation. The owner is already set up as the administrator, in this case the only owner. And here I would always select to choose the, this checkbox because it will reduce the revenue and the cost of the quote and items. Sometimes you have an opportunity that you put in the system and you have no quote yet. At that moment, I would say just leave it alone. Let's say somebody says, I need to have a new server. Probably labor and hardware would be 10,000 at the same uh, at one time. You will just probably put here as one time item, the 10,000 in there. But in this case, we're going to quote and that quote will tally up all the items that we're going to quote and that will have a more accurate reading. So why today, what we're going to do, we're going to use the button of using the revenue cost of the quoted items and we're going to uh, see how much the quote will come out to. To have more information into your opportunity, you can also put a probability. If you really work with, with the probability, a lot of times maybe you know the client, you can say it's 100%. Maybe you think, hey, this is client, maybe has a little doubt. You can put it maybe it's 75%. If it would be right an entire new client, you could say maybe it's only 20%. If you really work on those ones, uh, on those uh, uh, probabilities, then fill it out. If you're not working with it, then don't mind, you don't have to fill it out. Same thing too would be for the rating, hot, warm and cold. So you can also say, okay, well, this is an opportunity, maybe a year out, it's going to be cold. You can label it like that. In this case, we're working on it. It's 60 days out. I would say at least it's pretty warm, might even be, uh, be pretty hot. Again, only fill it out if you're actually doing it. Like you say, there's, it's not obligated. It's not an obligated field you have to fill in but it's, it's nice to track it. Same thing too for the primary product. You can fill out something in there to track the opportunities so you can see all your opportunities and you see where they all are. If you only have a couple of opportunities in the pipeline, then uh, it's, it's a nice to have, but especially if you have a sales manager, it's gonna be important to track in there what you're gonna uh, sell to see, okay, where do we have the most opportunities in there? Now that we created all the fields for the opportunity, basically the, the, the general bucket, now we can create a quote. Here on top, we can of course say save or save and close, but in this case, we're going to use the, the quicker function is to say save and create a quote. This button will save our opportunity and will open up right away a dialog box to basically go into the edit quote section. And this new quote is already being prepared. It will give us a quote number in a bit. 
But first, we have to fill in some basic information. Now, I already took the information from the opportunity itself. So the company name is here. The opportunity name, test quoting uh, from the opportunity is being copied into the quote name. But you can uh, add it here as well. That you maybe say, okay, this is going to be the version 2. You can have a quote description. The quote description is something that is not being shown on the quote itself. This is internal notes. So maybe you can say, you know, you can use internal labor or you know it's apart from a uh, from a vendor uh, x you can put it in here and it has the and the skew is uh, one two one two three four five so there's some internal information then you know like okay i use those parts from there to calculate this quote create date is by default filled out as today it's means also the effective date is being put as the same date as today the expiration date is by default set as a month from now out. In this case, we said the opportunity would be 60 days. So we can also crash here on the button. Unfortunately, here we don't have the exact 60 day button, but we say, well, this one is uh, ready until the end of June. An obligated field on the quote is now you have to put a contact name, although on the opportunity you don't need to have it, but on the quote, it does need to have a first name and a uh, contact. So we pull the one from the, from the action items. Quote is active. And on the bottom, there's also a quote comment. This is something that is visible on the quote. So I'll put in here, visible on the quote. So to remind yourself that whatever you type over here will be visible on the quote. There's a couple of tabs. The second tab is the terms. Usually we fill in the payment terms. This is fill in due upon receipt. That's something we want to know. Uh, you can fill out a couple of other items. It depends all what items you have listed on your, uh, on your template that you want to show. Usually we only use the payment terms because we have the quote information as limited as possible. And then you also have the notification button. If you want to let somebody know that you created a quote, then there's different ways that you can uh, notify somebody or even another email that's inside of your company that's not listed as an, as an Autodesk information. Again, usually it's handy when you have a sales manager. If there's only one person doing the quotes, then of course there's nobody uh, that needs to be identified. Once you're done, you can press save and open quote. And now the quote has been saved, a quote has been uh, created, and the quote number has been assigned, and now we are ready to actually create a quote. And as you can see, some information is being filled out on the quote itself. Sometimes the, the new menu comes up, but in this, in this case, it doesn't come up. There's always here the button through primary quote, and it'll bring you to the quote line item sheet. As you will see that this item is completely empty. This whole screen is empty. Nothing has been listed because we didn't do anything else. I'm going to show you first how to create a quote from scratch with a couple of different line items. And then I'm going to show you a couple of handy items around it, how to go faster to the same kind of end result. Here on the top, we have the new item and we can start as an example with the, with the new labor. And in here we can do labor. Again, it's always handy to use this cabinet uh, selector. It will bring up a pop menu on the items that we have. Let's say we're going to put an engineer and we're going to say this is going to be an investigation. You can choose to uh, set the proper text category. We'll say it's quantity one. It probably a lot of times it does need to have a cost. You can say it's going to be a regular cost of $50 and we press save and close. You also can press save and new. When you do save and new, it will bring up something in the same field of the labor item. In this case, I don't want to have a labor item. I just want to show you kind of all the items that we have in there. So I'm going to go to a product right now. In this case, I'm going to add a product. I'm going to use again the same cabinet file to select what kind of products we have ready in the system that I can use. that says no products available uh, but it's in the main screen i see here uh, it's in categories and this for example here on the printer there is a, a, a unit i'm going to select the printer checking the checkbox i can really fill out some uh, some stuff already that's pre-filled but i can also press just select it save and close and it will bring me right away into this sheet and now i can edit it and then i'm going to show you another way of how to get to this one as well so once I edit it, I have a couple of items that I can say. Okay, here, for example, I put a HP. That's going to be the one, two, three, four, five printer. Uh, I put my cost in there, 100% or 100. I want to do a 50% uh, markup, and it will calculate automatically my price over here, as you can see. But maybe I'll say, you know what, I'm going to sell it for 199 because that's the same price that I saw on the HP website. 
And if I click in this field, it will still, uh, based on the cost that you set, it will still mark up, uh, calculate your new markup. So this is a good way of calculating and setting the price. Easy way how to get there. Maybe you want to say, okay, I'm going to put a discount of $5. This would be a discount per, uh, for the unit itself. You can also do a line discount. Let's say we have an item of, uh, we have a total of five units. Uh, I'm going to give a line discount of five. That would mean a, and you can see it already, it calculates it, a unit discount of only $1. Uh, in this case, it says it's uh, the five dollar is fifty uh, percent discount. We can also say okay, the discount is going to be five percent. And as you can see, once I click on it, it uh, really re right away calculates the numbers what it is, will be. So in here, you can really be play already with the numbers on percentages, and then you can right away see what does it uh, look like for amount of numbers of discount that you can give. There's also an option to say you know what I'm going to make it an optional. This is not an obligated item. I'm going to mark it optional, and I'm going to press save and close. Now, that was a line item based on, on the product right away, but you can also go in there by product. And I did the file cabinet search, which was the middle item here on this screen. It was this one, but you can also use the first one. And by doing that one, you have the better uh, selection. Because that selection will bring you right away into the to a product. Let me wait until the sheet comes up. As you can see over here, this gives you a little bit more uh, items right away already uh, from here. In this case, I'm going to select equipment. And once I selected this, it right away brings me into the, the, uh, the file where it has the, the, the information. In this case, it's not been filled out because equipment, we use it as a generic line item. In this case, I can uh, also say this is going to be a server, for example. A uh, server that's a uh, Dell, it's the FXX server. Again, I can put a text category in there and I can a unit price of Let's say that's going to be the server that I'm going to use. Let's say it's going to be a seven thousand dollar server. It needs to have a cost as well. I'm not sure exactly what we buy it for today, but I'll put a regular number in there. And there's no discount, and I can press save and close. And as you can see on the sheet, as we are going, it fills out all the information. Uh, what we fill out, we have the labor, we have the product, we have an optional product here as well, and it really all tells us like what's the unit price, the unit cost, the gross profit, the markup, and the extended price. Right away, it gives you already the total amount of this particular quote. Now, there's a couple of more items that I do want to show you to add on it. The uh, main important one is a service, which is a recurring uh, item. I want to put that one on the quote as well. I'm going to select one again through using the little uh, icon, the first icon, to select an item. Because that will give us a, uh, a service that we can select. And once we have selected the service, we can select from there what we're going to do. In this case, we're going to say, let's say website hosting. Again, we can add description. Let's call it WordPress. I'll put some pricing in here. Fictional pricing, everybody. Don't, make, uh, don't get uh, excited or disappointed with this pricing. So now it's a service, which is a recurring uh, line item. Once I press save and close, you will see how it comes up on the sheet as a uh, recurring item section. Now on the service, there's also another option that you have over here that you can say, uh, instead of selecting servers, uh, the recurring item, there's also a setup fee. A setup fee can be done as a, a product item you can then have in there, but you can also easily put it over here. And this is the setup for the web hosting. And we'll put a price of $500 for this one. 500 euros, whatever your currency is, and we press save and close again. Now, although we added the setup fee to service, it's still uh, not a recurring item because it's a one-time fee, and that's why you see it here on the one-time items, there's the setup for the web hosting. We can kind of do similar things with the charge and expense, although the expense is not something that you use on uh, there. One-time items discount, that's a new item where you can uh, place an extra discount line item. And the last one is the shipping. I also want to show you that one. There's a couple of shippings usually by default already uh, configured in Autodesk. We can again use that little cabinet uh, file and we can see which one is. Now, of course, you can add multiple shipping items. And once you add one of these shipping uh, selections, let's say it's FedEx next day. Of course, you have to get a price from, uh, from your, uh, your shipper. Let's say it's also 150. 
And we'll press save and close. Of course, now I wanted to show you with the other ones. It does always ask you for a val uh, valid uh, item cost. Or maybe you have a code already or you have an online calculation of what it is. Usually shipping is expensive, so there's not too much margin on it. And I press save and close. And again, they should be presented as a separate secondary line item on it. As you can see here, it's listed on the shipping items. Now, once we do this quote, we can still do a quick preview through this button. And that will bring us up to a page and that will bring it up in a nicely uh, viewable item. And wait until um, Autotest renders this quote for us. It will put all those items together in a nicely presentable format. It will calculate the totals. And it will already use the template that you have set up. In this case, we didn't set up a logo, but if you have the, uh, the template set up, it will present you with a logo. If you have some uh, different items here, we'll present you with the differences. But as you can see over here, it has all those line items that we put in there with the descriptions that we put in there. Uh, and the template, for example, we put that little bar in here and it says, okay, what kind of uh, recurring uh, term it is. So that's why I placed it monthly over here. That was defined in a template. But I want to refer you back to, uh, to quote templates set up. If you think this code is all okay, as you can see, it has already a uh, signature button, a date button, and it has kind of a little, some, uh, some TNC on the bottom. So if you say this one is okay, then you can say, I'm going to publish this quote. There's several ways of doing it. You can even uh, request approval from the client. You can print it. You can print it to a PDF uh, yourself or just regularly print it out and take it to the client. Or you can generate a PDF through this button save it uh, and or email it to the client or even upload it to a, an electronic signature program. So those are all kind of ways on how to get this quote. Now in this case, we have this quote and I'm just going to leave it right now in this case, uh, but I want you to show you two other items to quickly get to this quote. I'm going to do a search for quotes in the system by that CRM quotes. In this case, I'm just going to use a general search on this quote see what kind of quotes we all have in the system. There's a couple of them in there, but I just want to use this last one that we have because I have another client. In this case, I don't have other clients, but I'm going to use the, that it would be in a different client. And I want to use the same quote exactly for this client too. So what I will do, I'll hover over this little hamburger menu on the test quoting, and I go to the item that says copy quote. And by copying the quote, I have the ability to even copy the entire quote, all the settings, and to copy it to a different opportunity for a different client as well. As you can see over here, it comes up already with the, the settings of the quote for itself with the internal notifications, but there's no company name yet. Now, I can choose this different company over here. And of course, what we know from the first instruction of this video is that uh, in order for us to have a quote, we also need to have an opportunity. So it will uh, request to, to have an opportunity created. And we're going to do that all in the same little process. As you can see, there's no real companies uh, available right now. We just have the unknown company. So for this test case, I'm just going to put it on the similar uh, company name. But I'm going to pretend there is no opportunity yet. So in this case, I'm going to add the plus sign. I'm going to press on this plus button. And what this will do, it will create a new opportunity in the system, in this case uh, for the same client, but I'm going to call it like it's a different client. And we're going to quickly go through the process of filling out that opportunity. And then you will see that we have a different uh, quote on a different opportunity. Yes, quoting V2, but I'll call it on a call it new company. Make the mistake again. There we go. Stage. We'll put it again in qualification. We're going to do the close date. In this case, we'll put it 30 days out. And we're going to make sure that we check this box too. And we're going to press save and close. Now we created a new opportunity on the so-called new client. And this new quote is being automatically associated with this new opportunity name. As you see, it's new company. Only thing you have to fill in again, the, the contact name, because usually it's also a new company, doesn't know it. And in this case, we are ready to go.
it took all the settings. I'm going to open up the quote and I'm going to show you that it has copied all those particular line items. And let's go to search this quote. We left the quote name the same, uh, but it has over here in the opportunity column, you can see test quoting on the new company. I want to quickly hover over this hamburger menu and I say view edit the quote items. And then you will see it's the same quote line items that we had on the original quote. See all those line items. If we go back to this main screen, uh, there's an option too that we have a column chooser. That's this button. And let's see if we can find the quote number as well. That's usually as a uh, number that, uh, that we are used to. And let's say we're going to put the number all the way on top. A little bit more on the beginning. Press save and close. So the column chooser is a good option too to have a little bit more information what you want to have in here. Now we have the quote number listed away all the way up front over here. And you can see that over here we have the test coding V2. And we have the other test coding V2, but with a different quote number. And technically should be on a different client. So that's all how it goes. Now I'm going to show you another item too, because there's another quote that we have in the system. Test quoting. And I'm going to show you another way too, because let's say you have already an opportunity in the system. You have already uh, the quote already in the system, but you started with your one line item. And you kind of remember like, well, this is kind of the same or I need to add something from a different quote. In this case, I have a quote here that has already a couple of items with equipment and server monitoring and one-time items. But the quote that we just did, I want to import all those line items too, because this client needs to have the exact same items. For that, you go to Tools, and then it has the button over here. It says Import Items from Existing Quote. We press the button, and that will bring us up a sheet where we can select uh, other quotes. And we're going to find that quote that we just did. It has it already by their company name. So let's see if we can press the search button and let's see what finds off a couple of quotes for us. Of course, it's on this uh, client. Of course, I now remember we don't have anything on there. So I'll just re need to remove the client name. And then I'll press search again. This basically gives me all the quotes for all the companies that are in the system. There they all are. And remember, we want to have the one that said that it had all those line items. So I'm going to use this one. I hover over the line item. I just click on it. It says currently selected this one. And then I say save selection. I press that button. And now what the system will do, it will import all those line items into this particular quote. And as you can see over here, now we have suddenly a whole bunch more line items. We have all those line items from that quote uh, that we did. And we have it now in this one. And now you have all those line items in there and you can still of course make some modifications. Let's say you say, yeah, this client, that printer is uh, something that they really need to have. So you go into the edit section of the little pencil and then you go edit the product and you say, this is not going to be a, an optional item. This is going to be an, basically an obligated item and we uncheck the optional item on the, on the product. I wait for the screen to pop up. I'm going to uncheck the optional. I'm going to press save and close again. And once that is done, you will see that we have the quote completely edited. And it was basically a quick quote because we had the quote used from the original uh, quote line items that we had. And we added uh, a line item from other quotes. And you can do it, I don't say unlimited less, but yeah, if you have a couple of quotes and you need to create one big quote for a client that is combined with quotes that you did for either way the same client or for other clients, this is an easy way how to get all those quotes together into one big quote and quote out uh, kind of similar representable items that you have without redoing everything. As you can see over here, this quote was pretty quick to get a whole bunch of line items on a quote. And again, you have the option to go over here, see the preview of the quote and print it or PDF it or send it to the client. I think this is a good overview of, uh, of how to create a quote, how to add line items, but also especially use the tools on quickly adding a line item by uh, copying line items from an existing quote. There's unfortunately no option to uh, copy an existing line item to another line item. That's why it's so important that if you have an existing quote with all those line items to basically import those line items from another quote in here.
that's the fastest way in uh, Autodesk to, to create quotes that are kind of similar. Even if they're 60% similar, it sometimes makes sense to just copy a quote and then modify what is not needed and add what you need extra for that one. If you have any questions or comments, uh, go to our Facebook group and leave your comments over here. I think this is it for now. Let's go selling and let's send out a whole bunch of quotes. Thank you.